Hello everyone. Today I am presenting our paper, Hand Gesture Recognition via Transient Phase SEMG Using Transfer Learning of Dilated Efficient CapSnet for its Generalization for Neuro Robotics. This paper was based on research conducted at New York University. On the agenda for today, we have the motivation and goal of this research, the data acquisition, the data preprocessing, the model architecture describing our proposed lightweight CapSnet, the experiments and results evaluating our proposed method and comparing with state-of-the-art methods, and finally, the conclusion. As of late, there has been an accelerated surge in utilizing deep neural networks to decode central and peripheral activations of the human nervous system, such as surface electromyography, or SEMG, in order to boost the performance of human-centered robotic systems, such as prosthetics and exoskeletons. Because of the variability of SEMG, which is naturally different across people and even different across muscle groups of the same person, the convention of SEMG-based gesture recognition is user-specific. However, data collected from a single user is not sufficient for data-hungry deep learning models. Our work aims at applying transfer learning in conjunction with our efficient capsule neural network to relax the need for having access to massive individual data and take advantage of the field knowledge, which can be learned from a group of participants. While using only 5% of the gesture repetition data, we achieve an average accuracy near 70%. The relaxation on a large amount of training data also allows our proposed method to train on transient data. To predict a gesture before it is completely enacted helps to achieve seamless control. Our work is based on Nina Pro database DB2, exercise B, which includes recordings of 40 healthy subjects performing 17 hand gestures. Each hand gesture was held for 5 seconds, followed by 3 seconds of rest for 6 repetitions. The acquisition setup included 12 Delsus trypno electrodes. Researchers conventionally leverage the entire repetition or only the plateau phase, where muscle contractions are stable and clean, allowing for better control but inherently introducing delay. Motivated by this issue, we predict hand gestures using only the transient phase signals, significantly reducing the training time and control delay. We define the transient phase based on the average RMS of the accelerometer data. As a result, the transient phase is the first 20%, one second on average, of the gesture repetition. Then, we normalize the signals using z-score normalization, with zero mean and unit standard deviation found from the training data. Then, we rectify the normalized signals into their absolute values. Recognizing gestures from a single timestamp is extremely difficult, so we apply windowing on the rectified signals. Based on literature, we choose a window of size 300 milliseconds that meets the requirement of real-time implementation. The stride is 10 milliseconds. Therefore, each sample here has a dimension of 600 by 12. And here we can see that as the window slides, each stride produces a new sample window. Here we see that the original CapsNet is composed of a convolutional block, capsule block, and reconstruction decoding block. Our proposed FCAPS cuts off the reconstruction decoding block largely reducing the model complexity while maintaining the model performance. Adding dilation to several convolutional layers further reduces the number of trainable parameters in training time. As you can see here, the proposed dilated efficient CapsNet consists of two blocks. The convolutional block has four convolutional layers. The capsule block has a primary convolution, followed by a squash function, where for the squash function, V sub J is the vector output of the capsule J, and S sub J is the total input, a capsule layer to perform the rooting by agreement, where the predictions of the low-level capsules are rooted to their best-matched parent. This helps assess the reciprocal agreement between groups of neurons to capture covariance and leads to a compact model with fewer parameters and better capability to generalize on new data. And a lambda function that generates the outputs, which for this model architecture is the probability of each signal classified as one of the 17 gestures. To further reduce the training data while maintaining high performance, we leverage the concept of transfer learning. We pre-train the dilated efficient CapsNet on the data from the top five performing subjects together. The dashed line in the convolutional block denotes that only two convolutional layers in the model are trained when calibrating individually on the 35 remaining subjects in the data set. This table introduces the models that are compared with our proposed top five FCAPs, an LSTM-CNN hybrid model, a five-layer multilayer perceptron, and a four-convolutional layer 2D CNN model. We also compare with our efficient CapsNet models to emphasize the benefit of transfer learning. In order to evaluate the model capability with limited available training data, we train our top five FCAPs 
in the comparing models on different percentages of transient data segmented on time, named temporal segmentation, and on repetitions, named repetition-based segmentation. We conduct the train-test split based on repetition. In this figure, purple repetitions are training data, test data are in red. Here we see the temporal segmentation performance comparison with statistical significance tests across selected models. The top five FCAPs can maintain high accuracy when given less and less data, while accuracies of other comparing models decrease drastically. Additionally, the model evaluation with the temporal segmentation scheme illustrates an explicit advantage through the use of transfer learning. Given any amount of training data, the proposed efficient caps that, with and without transfer learning, consistently outperform other models. Here we see the repetition segmentation performance comparison with statistical significance tests across selected models. Although the advantages of the transfer learning are diminished for the repetition segmentation, since the task is highly correlated to the amount of data fed as training samples, the efficient CAPSnet with and without transfer learning still consistently outperforms the other models. In order to evaluate the efficacy of using the transient signals, we observe the top five FCAPs performance when training and testing on different signal portions. Using the two-sided Mann-Whitney-Wilcoxon test with Bonferroni correction for significance, we observe no significant difference between the model performance using different signal portions. The use of the transient signal provides a substantial improvement in control time, while the performance is not significantly different from that of the steady state or complete data. Overall, we notice a higher predictive accuracy with the temporal as opposed to the repetition-based segmentation experiments, as the performance of the repetition segmentation test is highly correlated with the amount of data fed as training samples. Based on the temporal segmentation across 35 subjects, top 5 FCAPs can achieve nearly 70% predictive accuracy with only 5% of the complete signals, and 80% with only 20% of the complete signals. This material is based upon work supported by the U.S. National Science Foundation and is also partially supported by NYU Abu Dhabi Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics. Thank you very much for your attention.